Hello, friends. So today, this is a very basic topic that I'll be talking uh, as a part of ultrasound series. So I'm sure most of you who are listening to this would be fairly experts in uh, diagnosing pleural effusion on chest ultrasound. So I'll just take you uh, in a very briefly as to for any trainees who have just entered intensive care and uh, who need to know objectively as to how to interpret the chest ultrasound to recognize pleural effusion. So, as I'm sure most of you would know, ultrasound has become now a standard tool in any ICU to be utilized to recognize the presence of pleural effusion. And uh, this is also utilized to do certain procedures like pleural tapping. You need to do it now, ultrasound guidance. Gone are the days where we do it blindly. So, in fact, it's a malpractice if a plur uh, plural tap is done without ultrasound guidance. So, now it is mandatory that any tapping is done, it should be under ultrasound guidance. So, obviously, when you do a chest ultrasound to identify pleural effusion, the salient aspect is to determine the position of your probes. So, where would you keep the probes and uh, how would you go about doing this? So you would have to look at obviously both sides to determine which side is the pleural effusion. So the probe we typically use is the curvilinear uh, probe. Uh, so the suggested one is around three to five megahertz probe that can be utilized to do to look for the pleural effusion. So when you are checking for pleural effusion, it is suggested that we look at both sides of the lungs to see if there is effusion present on both sides. So you have a right plural view and the left plural view. And so the key thing is to look, look at an angle with the probe. The marker has to be pointed upwards and it should insinuate the diaphragm into the plural cavity. So it should be directed upwards. So the marker of the probe should be directed upwards and it should insinuate the diaphragm. So the ideal place to keep it is in the axillary space. Uh, preferably in the mid-axillary line or in the posterior axillary line and below the fifth intercostal space. So that is where uh, you can insinuate the diaphragm or much lower than that. So not above that because diaphragm is taken as a reference to recognize the structures, uh, which is the lung, the liver and the other structures. Uh, so that is the typical place that we keep the probe. So the key thing is to keep it at the level or below fifth intercostal space uh, with the marker pointing upwards, either in the mid axillary or in the posterior axillary. So if you can see in a diagrammatically, so this is the position it is uh, kept. Usually the rough way to look at is below the level of nipple in the mid axillary or the posterior axillary line. And as I said, the marker should be pointed upwards. Uh, and if you keep it at the below the fifth intercostal space, so the probe will be insinuating the diaphragm and uh, the structures above it. So as I said, the marker should be facing upwards. So when you look on the right side uh, in the mid or the posterior axillary line, so this is how you would see the structure. So always look for the glistening structure, which is the diaphragm. So the key thing for everyone to recognize is we call it as a mirror artifact image. So you, when you put the probe, obviously, you know, the lung is above and the liver is below. But sonologically, you will see it as reverse. So this is something which every entry-level trainee should recognize. So liver is seen above. As you see, liver is seen above. And next to that liver is the kidney. And the one below this will be the diaphragm. So it will be the opposite. So always look for the lung below the diaphragm on the right side and towards the right. So I'll show you more images. So liver is always above. So is the case on the left side. So you will see a glistening diaphragm. So spleen will be seen above, lung will be seen below or to the left. So on the right side, it will be seen below or to the right. The lung will be seen below or to the right of this glistening structure. So as you see, the liver is above. Kidney is here. Kidney, you can easily make out by looking at the cortex and the medullary aspect. So the lung will be below. If there is a lot of effusion, you will see because you will see more effusion here and the lung will be pushed to the right. So you will see it more to the right if there is a lot of effusion. If there is no effusion, lung will be seen below this glistening structure. As you see again, so this is the diaphragm, the glistening aspect. The liver you will see above. So we call it as a mirror artifact because you are seeing it as a reverse thing. 
so this is something which is very important that you don't look for the liver uh, below it is liver is always above so it is very easy on the right side so left side sometimes it can be tricky so this is on the left side as you see again you see the glistening so the glistening structure sometimes may not be as marked as it is on the right side so the spleen is seen above and next to the spleen will be kidney and the lung will be below and if there is lot of effusion the lung tends to come to the right side so there you saw lung tends to go to the left side here you see below and it can be to the right when there is more effusion so again as you see the diaphragm is a glistening the glistening sometimes can be less pronounced so sometimes can be tricky so the spleen is seen above and the lung is seen below or to the right so this is just a schematic representation so you would see diaphragm liver kidney is here and then if you have a pleural effusion it will be seen something like this so we will try to see how different pleural effusions look the mild pleural effusion or small pleural moderate and massive massive is very easy so if there is a small pleural effusion this is on the left side as you would see spleen is above kidney is to its uh, right and you will see the lung below and there is effusion below so always look for effusion below and to the right on the left side and to, uh, to the left on the right uh, on the left side and to the right on the right side so this is the moderate pleural effusion so moderate pleural effusion as you see you will uh, so this is the glistening structure so this is the pleural effusion and as you see the lung is below so always look for the lung below and to the right on the right side so this is the large pleural effusion it's very easy so this is fairly intuitive as you see this is the liver so you will see lung more on the right side so the effusion is present so there's a lot of effusion here and sometimes you see like this a tail thing which is moving so it is very easy in the large effusions that you will see lung more towards the right so if it is a mild pleural effusion you will see more towards the lower part of the diaphragm so again so this is a loculated pleural effusion so where you see locules so as you see the lung you will see the shredding shredding sign so liver is here so you will see the loculated effusion with the locules and there is this fibrin attachment that is seen so this is uh, typically you would see in a loculated you will see multiple locules so always look for the lung on the below or to the right of the diaphragm so this is the pleural effusion we uh, just to show the video image in our icu where we did so it's a very simple thing so as you see you when you're doing it you will see this glistening structure so this is the pleural effusion this is the lung i said it will be to the right so measuring pleural effusion so i'll just show this image so so you see the cursor so there is a way we measure the pleural effusion so I'll tell you the formula as to how we recognize the pleural effusion. Okay. So what are the advantages of ultrasound? So ultrasound is more accurate than the chest X-ray to recognize and uh, diagnose pleural effusions. And another advantage of ultrasound is we can quantify uh, fluid in the pleural cavity. So that is another advantage because in X-ray, it is hard for us to quantify fluid in the pleural cavity and ultrasound will also help us to recognize loculated pleural effusions and most importantly ultrasound can be utilized to do the drainage of the pleural effusion be it diagnostic or therapeutic so as i said all the pleural tapping should happen under ultrasound guidance and there's no way in this day and age that we can think of doing drainage in a blind way so it has to be done under ultrasound guidance for which ultrasound is very useful so this is an important thing which possibly will be useful for the trainees as to how do we quantify the amount of pleural fluid present so there was this good study that came in 2006 done by balik et al uh, who has put up a very simple formula to quantify uh, pleural effusion in icu so as you see this is the lung and this is the parietal pleura the diaphragm so you look at the distance between the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura the maximum distance that you can recognize in any window and do do that measurement in millimeter and you use this formula 
the only number that everyone should remember is 20. 20 into SCP. SCP is the distance between the parietal and the visceral pleura, the maximal distance at the maximum, it is at the end expiratory distance. So maximum end expiratory distance between the parietal and visceral pleura, wherever you see, you take that measurement and you multiply into 20. And that will give you the amount of pleural fluid in ml. So, and but what the studies have shown is if the distance is less than 17 millimeter, so you multiply 17 into 20, it is 340. So this may not be a good tool to recognize or to not recognize to quantify pleural effusion less than 340 ml. So anything more than that. So if you have a measurement, anything that is more than 17 millimeter, it may be reasonably accurate to quantify pleural fluid by doing this measurement, which was uh, which was uh, substantiated by Balik et al. in 2006 study. Mm -hmm. So these are just the other images. Uh, so as you see, the lung is always to the right and to the below, so effusion will be above. So all that, just the different images for all our trainees. Uh, so you would see a collapsed lung here. So there is pleural fluid here. So this is the loculated effusion. And this is on the left side. As I said, you will see the spleen above and you will see the lung below and to the left. So the left pulmonary consolidation is there. And again, spleen is here. And you would see the consolidated lung here in the diaphragm. So summarily, it's a very simple video just to objectively know where to keep the probe and, uh, and the structures that are uh, related to each other when you are doing ultrasound and the way to quantify pleural fluid. So possibly I'll be doing more of this lung ultrasound. So this is part of the ultrasound series. So you can revisit uh, this video by visiting my website www.drkarifangapa.com. So, so this is another window uh, where spleen you will see and this is the lung below and you will see the shredded sign. Mm -hmm. So thank you all. End with this beautiful quote. Good friends help you to find important things in your lost in your smile, your hope, and your courage. So thank you all.